so he has um, uh, spastic diplegia cerebral palsy, which means that he that it's it affects from his waist down more than any other part of his body. And before the rhizotomy, he stood only on the tip on his tiptoes. Um, he wore braces to try to bring that heel down, but his his leg was constantly pulling his heel up. Um, into a tiptoe position, so so that just doesn't allow for any stability. You just can't uh, maneuver through the world without tipping over easily. <laughs> the first person that ever talked to me about rhizotomy was Dr. Sun, and that was through a process. We go to a spasticity clinic once a year, and um, they follow Creighton and they're paying attention to his cerebral palsy and how it affects his functional life. And so when he was about four years old, Dr. Sun said that he was a good candidate for it. It wasn't time yet. He wanted us to do the research and find out um, if that was a good decision for us. Um, before he had the surgery, his legs were tight and he um, spent most of his time is wheelchair. Um, he was out of his wheelchair at home and in his classroom and he had canes that he could walk with, but it wasn't safe for him to be in groups of people or out in the community outside at all because he fell. Although we're looking at a picture of him now, we have to imagine a picture of him, you know, 30 years from now. And what can we do now to make that better? Creighton went through the evaluation. We felt he was a good candidate for rhizotomy. He got the rhizotomy, and now he's walking better. Uh, he's, he's able to walk independently, but more importantly, we know that with his legs flowing in a smoother motion, maybe while he still may need some aid, such as crutches, uh, that over a lifetime, he'll be able to continue to be able to walk in the community without having to resort in the wheelchair, which is what he would have had to do to be able to get around. How do you feel about the decision we made to have the dorsal rhizotomy? Good. Um, I can do more skill like that, you know. Yeah. Stop. Like, um, I, like what kind of skills did you get from it? I could take a shower independently. Yeah. You know. Then what? first it was a little step stool I sat on. Then I moved up to this shower chair, and I was totally, almost, about probably 99% independent in mm -hmm. the shower, except for my back and my bottom was kind of hard to get. I would say rally your support. You, you need people to back you up and go for it. It's hard to do, but 200 times worth it. Just changed the outlook of my son's life. And if your child can have that kind of a change in expectations, it's hard to do. But especially if you're looking at um, Children's Hospital in Oakland or Dr. Sun, you're in the best hands. They'll lead you through it, and I think we just got tremendously excellent care from beginning to end. Because of the surgery and because of the rehab, it really it gave him a new sense of awareness um, that, that he didn't have before. And it's we encourage him to try new things all the time, but a lot of it is himself. He just, he... He wants to do new things, so we just let him have at it. So I think it was, a, I think, great. Creighton could have an independent life, that he could um, eventually walk into an interview and shake, shake the hiring manager's hand, that he would stand at the altar when he got married, were things that we hadn't, maybe hadn't thought about a lot, but hadn't really expected for him.